Hello, welcome to the party. Hi, I've never met you before. I know. Just two guys and we're having a good time. Having a good time. Having a good time. Just two guys and we're having a good time. Having a good time. Uh, welcome back to Just Two Guys. Um, we're here. We don't know which camera we're, we're going to come to me. All right, all right. That's good. Uh, tonight, we've got a pretty interesting episode. Um, we're going to go back to our original roots, uh, speaking about history. Um, so that should be very interesting. We've got a, a nice little new idealistic project we've got going that will actually happen that we'll discuss at the very end. Yeah. Um, but John, I think we need to start off with our question and answer session. So do okay. you want to start us off? Sure. I have a question here that I think you'll like. Okay. If you could see any character get a spinoff of The Simpsons, who would you like to see? Mo. Mo. Yeah. So I, tell me, tell me a little more. Well, I think I think you know it would, it would have to stay in Springfield, and obviously, the, so the characters would all be the same, but the focus is on Mo because he's so creepy. Yeah. And he, I just think there'd be a lot of because I think that they could add some new characters to be his buddies. Yeah, that's and true. I'd like to see more of his apartment yeah. and maybe you know run-ins with Wiggum and. Uh, uh, yeah, he, he's an interesting guy. Yeah, yeah, I, I like him. And the whole uh, there's the where he had to do a lie detector test. Yes, <laughs> priceless. Okay. Everything about Mo is great. Okay, that's great good. question. <laughs> Okay, Jam. If you were a ninja, what kind of weapon would you choose that suits you most? Throwing stars, nunchucks, bow and arrows, daggers, or sword? Now, I don't know if those are exclusively ninja weapons, but you know, mm. I, my view of ninjas is. Gosh, that's skewed. a tough one. I was going to say a banjo. Originally. You could use a banjo. But no, you you've made a list for me, and I'll choose from it. Okay. Uh, I think uh, just a sword. You just use a sword. Yeah, because I saw a guy on Regis and Kelly one one day. <laughs> well, I'm glad you've admitted uh, that. <laughs> he, he, he can cut something like a uh, hundred apples in a minute with his wow. with his ninja sword. So that would be your ninja. Yeah, and it inspired me. I thought I would love to go cut apples. He throws them up and cuts just them. Just apples. <laughs> just apples. Okay. That's all. I promise. All right. I wouldn't be a very good ninja, I guess. <laughs> Uh, okay. The Chicago Cubs decide they can't do any worse, and decide to fill you, fill their <laughs> roster, fill their roster, not you. I think they almost did last year. Fill their roster with all civilians. Oh, okay. They're having tryouts right here in Springfield. Okay. You want to try out for first base. Uh -huh. Lou Pinella wants you to try out for right field. Right. You refuse, and he gets very angry. He challenges you to a duel. Do you accept? And what is your weapon of choice? Wow, <laughs> a good another weapon of choice. Another weapon question. of choice question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as we are doing with Lou Pinella, um, you know, I think I would definitely stay away from the guns because I just don't feel like I'd have much of a chance. Yeah. <laughs> against an angry man like Lou Pinella, he has a history of anger. Yeah, yeah. I'd probably take a, a long spear because I have longer arms. That's true, that's true. So we would just kind of joust. And he's kind of old. Yeah. It's stick it right through the neck <laughs> or something. <laughs> you would joust, running yeah. joust? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I can just see that now. I mean, it's the best I got. <laughs> that's, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Then you could be any position you want. I would be first base. That's awesome. Or second. Um, all right. Here's the scenario. A man walks through the studio door, right through there, with a silenced handgun. He tells mm. you that you're going to play a little game of Manhunter. He will give you a 30-second head start. If you go to the police or anyone else, your co-host will get one between the <laughs> eyes. Tell me the rest of the story. Uh, well, I get a 30-second head start. 30-second head start. I think, uh, wow, that's really tough to conceive. Yeah. I guess I would just run as fast as I could. Um, I would go to the nearest building and try to get behind it. Uh -huh. um, I don't know. I, 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 I would, would, you, would you eventually figure out that i got to turn around and get this guy myself? Probably, but I'd probably try to get to a decent location first, and uh, hopefully I'd have my ninja sword handy. 
There and you go. Or I could have hidden it in the bushes. I think that's what most ninjas do. Would you take his arm off his head? What would you? I'd go for the head. When you're being chased by a guy with a gun, with a silenced right. pistol, no doubt, Right. Uh, you really have to just pull no punches. Well, thank you for choosing to not go to the police and making me take one. Well, I was, just, I was actually going, going to uh, use a caveat with that statement and say that most people I would just go to the police. <laughs> <laughs> Most I people. really appreciate that. And, uh, you know, if the situation were different, if I were in the situation, I still might. So I'm <laughs> sorry. Uh, it's easy for me to say I wouldn't right now, but. <laughs> I appreciate that. But there's a good Honestly. chance if I went to the police, it would still take them forever to do anything about it. <laughs> that so, is true. <laughs> yeah. That's a good question, though. I like that one. Uh, if you were trapped on a deserted island mm -hmm. and you could only take the artistic works from one time period, from which period would they be? Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, artistic works from a time period. Mm -hmm. Definitely nothing from the 20th century. I'm not a big 20th century fan. Um, I don't know. I'd probably take like caveman art. Cave, caveman art. <laughs> yeah. Something that's on our level. Yes. Something that we can understand. I could draw caveman art. Yeah, me too. I no, actually I, do. I, I, seriously, I'd probably go with the Egyptians and their, you know, some of their art. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Okay. I like yeah. that answer. Yeah. That surprises me. The old time Egyptians. I mean, you know, I like all the, the classical, quote unquote, classical yeah, stuff. But it you gets know, old. See. But yeah, it's all, you know. Yeah. You I put agree. it on the wall. You don't see much papyrus on yeah. the walls anymore. Um, mm -mm. No, not enough. All right, John. What's your stance on Bluetooth technology as a fashion item? <laughs> as a fashion accessory? <laughs> yes. I uh, hate it. Yay. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. I. You always have these, I always have these experiences where I'm somewhere and someone's talking on one, and I, d I can't tell that, and so I think they're talking to me. Or you know what I can't stand? Is I can't stand somebody in a restaurant having dinner, not talking on, with somebody on those things, but they've still got them on their ear. Yeah, that's weird. People walk around with them all the time. That's what I'm thinking. On. It's like a fashion accessory now. I just want yeah. to punch them. Yeah, it's like a really I hope ugly. I don't do it. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> don't. I just think you can just take it off, put it in your pocket. Yeah, why not? Is it that hard to just reach for it and throw it back on if, if you need to use it? It's a beef I got. Yeah, that's a good beef. I wanted to make sure you had the same beef. That's a good beef. Uh, let's see. Okay. If you could insert yourself into the plot of any book, movie, or television show, what would it be? Uh, describe how your character would change the outcome of the story. <sighs> TV show? Yeah, you can choose a TV show. I can just be any character? Any character. You would insert yourself into it. You wouldn't change any oh, characters. You become be a, a character? character in the show. Well, either way, I'm jumping in Magnum PI. <laughs> that's a, that's the bottom line. No, okay. So how would you? I would become the fourth friend. There's Rick and TC, but I would have to like be the other friend. So how would you change the outcome of the show? Um, would you would you bumble things up? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I would be kind of an antagonist. <laughs> yeah, a good guy, but an antagonist. Uh, yeah, a comedic sidekick, somebody yeah. who always foils the plan. Yeah, and Higgins would always say, "Oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> that's nice." Yeah, <laughs> I like that answer a lot. So that's my dream. <laughs> I should have known you'd choose a Magnum PI. Who wouldn't? Besides me. All right, um, let's get back to some art. Let's say you're strolling through the Louvre in Paris and you come upon a wall-sized painting of a man that is most definitely you. Uh, he is completely naked and in many ways not anatomically pleasing to the eyes. Oh. In fact, you overhear some American tourists saying, Oh, the humanity. What do you do? Wait, 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 wait. wait. Catch me up on this. He's anatomically uh, frightening? Yes. In that he's... Excessively small. <laughs> so, well, no, no, no. It's not just that part of him. I mean, there's other, there's just. Like puny arms. It, 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 I think there's like a little writing on the bottom saying the original, you know, Quasimodo or something. I don't know. Oh, okay. What would I do? Yeah, what would you do? I mean, you're, you're right there ah. on a canvas. I don't know. I guess I would just. In the Louvre. Would you say, hey, guys, it's me? I probably would. I'd probably just be like, that's me. Um, <laughs> let me set the record straight. <laughs> Let me set the record straight. Uh, you can see I have no hump. I, I, my arms are are puny, but not that puny, and I'm not well endowed, but <laughs> but not quite so desperate as that young man there. I, I don't know what I would do, honestly. Freak you out? Yeah, a little. Yeah. Well, you know, it's understandable. Yeah. 
Uh, if you could choose one person to return from the grave to give you advice, who would you choose? Oh, advice from the grave. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but I think it'd have to be someone uh, brilliant from history. <laughs> that uh, goes without saying. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know. I think Ben Franklin would be a good one. Ben to, Franklin? Yeah. Seemed to be a real smart guy. Yeah. Good head on his shoulders. Yeah, he had some, some wisdom. Yeah, yeah. He was a smart guy, an inventor. And, yeah. you know, I just, I think it'd be an interesting discussion to have with him. Most definitely. Who would you pick? Who would I pick? Yeah. Ah, that's a good question. Um, Every once in a while, I like to throw this back at you. Yeah, just, I don't know. I, I, I always like to go back to uh, characters like Whitman, because I think he had kind of a... His, kind of advice... What kind of advice would I ask him about? Mm -hmm. What the hell is going on in the world? <laughs> uh, he, no, he had his hand on the pulse of what was going on then. So, well, that's true. So, that's yeah. true. Yeah. All right. So, all right. Well, I think that's enough question and answers. Now we can get on to our uh, wonderful history segment. <laughs> wonderful. All right, we're ready to get into our second history segment, and what an appropriate time of year to do it. Uh, it's little known to people uh, in Sangamon County and Springfield because it's been so long um, that there was a natural disaster event that <clears throat> really changed the history of this area, not just this area, uh, most of Illinois. Yeah. And um, we're going to do a little dramatic reading in the middle uh, to kind of give you an idea of what was happening in those times. But, what life was like. Right? Yeah, but we want to start off by giving you the history of what occurred. Um, it was called the Deep Snow, as known to many of the settlers and people beyond and historians here. Um, it was an event in late 1830. Uh November and December were very mild months that year. Uh, so mild that the grass was still green well into right. late December. And much like the winters we've been having lately. Right. And so I think people were, you know, ready and excited about winter, you know, because they, they winter did serve some purposes back then. They, they, they were able to, you know, catch up on things that they can't catch up on during the summer and sure. the harvest and all that. Um, so, you know, they're used to a little snow. Uh, well, on Christmas Eve, like anybody would wish, uh, snow started falling. And, of course, they don't have uh, Gus Gordon to tell them. Or Kevily uh, Douglas. Or Kevily Douglas to come right. in and, and tell them exactly what's going to happen. Um, so the snow started falling on Christmas Eve. Uh, everybody was pretty excited. The kids were out playing. Um, in fact, I can read a little quote um, from Reverend uh, J.G. Bergen. This is the, the day was mild, Bergen wrote. The snow contributed greatly to the amusement of the boys and called forth the hilarity of all who had sleighs or sleds or who could rig one with a box store or a crate. So it was a very exciting time for everyone to have the snow finally falling and on Christmas Eve. So it fell and fell and fell. And Christmas fell. Day, it fell, fell, fell. The day after Christmas, it fell, fell, fell. It snowed three to four feet in about five days. And never stopped. Right. Uh, do you want to take it from there? I mean, you well, it, it was something like seventy some snow days that winter, right? Yes. And uh, it ended up that there were twelve foot drifts uh, at, at a level it was three feet deep across the entire state. Yes, at least three feet. You would walk out of your door, and there would not be anything lower than three feet. It just went up from there. Right. Um, and there were also days in there that actually did warm up. And you would get rain, the ice would come over this three foot, uh, you know, drifts, or, or I guess 15 foot drifts up down to three foot uh, piles of snow, freeze over, and the temperatures would drop to negative 20 degrees. Yeah. So people had to live in these conditions. And um, here in Sangamon County, there were several 
deaths. Um, I can actually read read about a few of the more gruesome well, deaths, but a lot of people died, and a lot of people ran out of food. They became desperate for food. Um, a lot of these settlers had only been here for two or three years, so they yeah. hadn't really had a chance to develop. Yeah. Well, it was a very new time. In fact, right. this was around the time where we, our last history segment, Sangamo Town. Right. Sangamo was... Town would have experienced um, this very deep snow, but in reality, this deep snow was not just localized. It stretched from you know, parts of southern Illinois all the way to Chicago yeah. and all throughout the Midwest. It affected the entire Midwest, in, right? It affected the entire Midwest. And it, it just, it, it really was the biggest hardship probably of the century yeah. for the people in, in this part of Illinois. Do we want to do our first dramatic reading? I think we do our, our first dramatic reading. Um, do you want to do the narrator? This is, yeah, or? this is Tales from the Deep Snow, and this is... Uh, Dramatic reading number one. Yes. Uh, it's the winter of the deep snow. People all over central and southern Illinois are doing their best to stay warm. Supplies are running desperately low, and no one knows how they're going to survive without food. There's a knock at the door. Well, hello there, neighbor. Won't you come in from the cold? A man will catch his death out there. Don't mind if I do, thank you. Warm up by the fire there. So, what brings you out in the face of such harsh conditions? Well, as you might imagine, Edward, me and my family is about to starve from lack of provisions. I'm trying to get a group of strong-bodied men to travel south with me and get some food before it's too late. Nothing's going to stop me, Edward. I'm hell-bent on getting to Little Egypt and before the week is out. Starve? Well, that's crazy talk. Heck, I'll just have Mary get you some vittles together and you can take them home to the family. What? But how do you have food when everyone else is as hungry as an Irishman? Well, uh, we're eating Dan Roberts. Eating Dan Roberts? But he's your neighbor. Yeah, but he's getting on in years. Uh, he's almost 40. Well, how was he? Quite tasty. Mary and the kids, well, they had a hard time getting started, but I just put it to Mary this way. The good book calls children the fruit of thy womb, and everyone grows up from childhood. I says, now, Mary, we're all just a lot like ripe fruit. And what'd she say? Well, you know, Mary, soon as she was, as soon as she knew it was okay in the church's eyes, she had a heaping plate full of Dan. And the kids? Well, I just told the kids that the leg steaks is really quite succulent. They was hungry enough that eventually they tried it. For long, they was as sold on the idea as I was. You know, I've always thought that Dan looked like a tasty fella. Well, well and he is. And you know how he always aimed to help people and be helpful to the community. I think he'd be happy to know he's finally doing his part to help out around here. It's about time, am I right? <laughs> well, yes, Dan wasn't good for much. Uh, he was just a lazy man, as some men are prone to be. Bet it makes for tender meat. Oh, most definitely tender. But he is a good man, that Dan Roberts. So, can I have some of him for me to take home with me? Uh, it sure would be to trip down south in this cold snow and ice, don't you think? <laughs> well, sure. Uh, Mary, would you mind getting some of Dan, uh, putting him in a bag for old Charles Goodshaw and his kin? Uh, they're a mite hungry. Many thanks to you and yours. Oh, heck, it ain't no trouble. You know, I've always said, what's the point in having friends if you can't eat one once in a while? Yes, that's true. You have said that. That's very so, good uh, dramatic reading. So that just captures a little of what life was like in the deep snow. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we, we, we talked about in there uh, uh, something that we, we hadn't discussed yet, and that's the... Uh, Little Egypt term. I was just going to, to talk yes, about that. Yes, um, which if you have been to Southern Illinois or you're from Southern Illinois, you know the terms. Right. Little Egypt. Cairo. Cairo. Um, there are many terms down there. And one of the theories is, and I think it's a pretty good theory, is the reason they call that Little Egypt is because it was warmer down there and they could go down to Southern Illinois for supplies. Well, yeah, and I actually found this article that was written by a judge uh, who lived in southern Illinois uh, around that time, and he said that actually the name Egypt started the following summer because the snow and the, the coldness lasted so long into the summer that a lot of people in central Illinois weren't able to get their crops in at all. Wow. So that following summer, everybody was without crops. And the year before, uh, corn was selling at 10 cents a bushel. The year, the summer after, it was selling for two dollars a bushel. Oh wow! So people weren't able to afford it. So they kept, they were using the biblical story of Egypt to refer to the land of plenty in southern See, that's, Illinois. That's amazing. I do want to point out too, 
uh, if people who are wondering, well, where was Abraham Lincoln and all this? Abraham Lincoln was in central Illinois. He was living in Macon County at the time before he had uh, moved nice. uh, into uh, Sangamon County, Menard County. And um, so he was around the area. That was his first winter here. And he did experience and he did talk about it uh, later in years. Um, I, wanted, I wanted to talk about one local hero that, that we had here. Um, his name was Pascal Enos. Ah, Enos yes. is a popular name. I hope he didn't sign his name like Abraham Lincoln. Um, P. Enos? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say it. Um, that, would be his, that would be it. <laughs> anyway, uh, he, was, uh, he hitched a double yoke of strong oxen to a large sled and proceeded to go around the community bringing food and firewood to the stranded settlers. So wow. he was actually the one that saved many, many lives. He and was he'd go on. quite a man. Yeah, he quite was a quite a man. I'll, I'll describe him uh, through Bergen's eyes. Uh, with a wolfskin cap on head with Yankee frock, buttoned up close up to the neck behind, reaching below his knees, belted over a great coat beneath with legging protectors and ox coat in his hand. So that was kind of a description of him. He was you know, burly. He's got all this, wow. you know clothing on and he's riding around the community bringing everything he probably saved many many lives um there were qu quite a few gruesome stories coming out of the deep snow um wow. you know men would get stranded out there eaten by wolves that p enos was a was a real <laughs> <laughs> was a real hero <laughs> you'll never go down enos street again without no, thinking no not, uh, not around p Pascal. enos street yeah. <laughs> um do we do have a second a second skit here and this is sort of what reading. life was like uh, after the deep snow passed. Yes, yes. So, the scene is the summer of 1831. The sun is shining down and the breeze is blowing lightly through the prairie grass. A group of people are gathered around for a cookout. Well, you old snowbird, you... Oh, you're Charles. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll Sorry. start off. That's all right. That's you all right. start We're off. We're not actors, so... Well, you old snowbird, you. This is some feast you've laid out for us. I just thought it was quite fitting and proper to celebrate our survival of that long and treacherous winter past. You certainly outdid yourself. I was just telling Mary that this is some of the best eating I've done since my mama made possum stew for Sunday's dinners. You know, Charles, during all that cold last winter, I just couldn't stop dreaming on summer. Mary and I would go to bed talking about summertime. You know, real beautiful things. Swimming down at Panther Creek in the hot summer sun cool breeze in your hair? Them's the things we take for granted. Yes, sir. Well, one night as we was drifting off to sleep, Mary says to me, Edward, we ought to have a shindig this summer to commemorate these hard times. And I says, well, I think that's a darn good idea. Well, everything's perfect. And I'll tell you, Edward, we all owe you a debt of gratitude. If it hadn't been for you, none of us would have made it through the long, deep snow winter. Well... I hated to eat so many of our friends and neighbors, but a man's got to do what a man's got to do, I reckon. You're a real hero to all of us, Edward Killington. Well, when Mary came up with the idea for a summer shindig, we started thinking on who would taste the best. We decided it'd be nice to go ahead and cook up Joseph Watson from down around Clayville. He's always had that tender look about him. He's a delicious man, Joseph. I dare say you made a good pick. Well, the city slickers in Sangamo Town don't even eat this good. I reckon they don't. God bless this community. <laughs> that was very yes. good. That was good. And I think it's really capturing what was what was happening in Yeah, those, not those only were times. they desperate and ate their neighbors, but they enjoyed it yeah, a little bit yeah. too. And yeah, I think this should be uh, uh, a warning for us. This could happen at any time. Yeah. Global warming, that's what was occurring at that time. Right. I mean, you know. And so... You know, if you're at home, you, you might want to put some deadbolts on your doors in case the neighbors come knocking. <laughs> if the snow starts to fall for more than two days, lock your doors, people. Mm -hmm. You never know what's going to happen. There's a lesson to be learned here. There is. Don't there let is. history repeat itself. No, no. <laughs> so, John, that's the, uh, you know, that's the, the basic history of the deep, deep snow. It, it you know, as, as we had fun with it, you know, it was an interesting history nonetheless. And the, the snowbird term was used for everybody who lived through that time That's for the right. rest of their That's life. Right. So, yeah. Anyway. Great. Yeah, well, Thanks. I'm glad we got back to history, John. Me too. It was good. All right, we're going to come back in a second here and talk about a nice new little fun project. We'd like to take a few minutes to talk about a serious problem here in the city of Springfield. I'm just kidding. Um, actually, for a long time, we've been wanting to have a, a group that's sort of like a book club only for people who like to watch movies. And 
get together and watch movies and talk about them and do things that geeky people do about watching movies. Yeah. And so it started out that it was going to be a, a little club that w we would get together with friends and do it at our, our homes and, uh, you know, rotate. And then it occurred to me that Capital City Bar and Grill here in town uh, over in Capital City Shopping Center has a theater and they show movies every Tuesday night. So I got in touch with the people at Capital City and I asked them for a night that we might be able to request movies and invite people and they would be open to the public and people could come watch movies and then feel free to sit around afterwards and discuss the movies and talk about them you know, for as long as they, they want to stay. Um, so we've got this group, we're calling it the Movie Geek Club. Yes. The Movie Geek Club. And we're meeting every Tuesday night uh, every last, last every last Tuesday of the month, of the, of the month, yes. Uh, starting on Tuesday, January thirtieth at seven o'clock, and the first movie we're showing uh, on Tuesday, January thirtieth, is Run Lola Run. Um, it's a a German foreign film that um, I think is really good. It's shorter. It's about eighty minutes, and um, it's got a lot of action. So, and after this airs past January 30th, it will be continuous every last yeah, Tuesday. every last Tuesday of the month for an undetermined amount of yes. time. But and it won't just be viewing. We also plan on talking about the movies. Mm -hmm. Similar to what we do around here where we just sit and we chit-chat and we joke around. Yeah. And, but we, 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 you know, I think we're all slightly want to be film critics. Yeah, everybody and, has. And we want to talk about sure. things. And so it's a good opportunity <clears throat> for people who really enjoy film, um, we probably won't be showing uh, Cabin Boy. Cabin Boy. Well, <laughs> <laughs> hold on now. <laughs> no J Lo movies. <laughs> no, no J Lo. And no, no. But uh, it should be you know it should be an interesting time, and we encourage everybody who wants to come out to come out. It won't yeah. just be the two of us. No, no, we've already got people who seem to be interested. So there will be yeah. three or four of us. Um, and we didn't attach the Just Two Guys name to it. No, I didn't really. It's not really a Just Two Guys <laughs> project. It was just no. something that I have always wanted to do. It's a John Anderson project. No, it isn't. <laughs> it's just something I've always wanted to be a part of. And I thought, since this is available, we might as well see what we can do to take advantage of it. Yeah. And um, I, I like the, the idea of you know taking groups of people who want to talk about books or yeah. movies or you know whatever it is and just talking about them. Yeah. Yeah. And and coming at it from w any angle you want. If you want to talk about content or if you want to talk about the way scenes are shot. It's all it's all open to discussion and you right. don't even have to stick around for discussion. You know, just go in, enjoy the movie and suck on a beer, get a burger, do something, you know, enjoy definitely. yourself. Um, thank goodness Capital City Bar and Grill is Doing this, yeah. this is this is really nice for this community. Yeah, and it, if you don't know where Capital City Bar and Grill is, um, it's just off Dirksen in the Capital City Shopping Center. Um, I don't really know the address right offhand. I don't know either. But we can. It's on the blog. Right. The blog is floating out here. And we're just trying land. to prevent bars from falling under because of the smoking ban. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> 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 um, okay. Well. We've got an issue with that yeah. puppy. Thanks for joining us and join us next week on Just Two Guys. Hello, welcome to the party. Hi, I've never met you before. I know. Just two guys and we're having a good time, having a good time, having a good time. Just two guys and we're having a good time, having a good time.